What else do you want to measure? Someone from this half of the room. Time and area. OK, we'll do area first because it's easy, because it's very much similar to this one. So area, and then we'll do time. So area is square meters. Three meters for area. Yep. Good. Just the same a meter by a meter. Okay. Time. Someone said time. Time. Okay. So time. We're gonna, uh, time. Well done with time. It's a good one. Um, unit for time is second. Exactly. <coughs> and the abbreviation of the symbol for that is an S. Okay. So I want. S at the time, not sec. It's not S-E-C. -E you either go with the whole word second, or seconds, or S, not S-E-C. The S-E-C is a trigonometry term, short for second. That's to do with cosines and sines and that sort of business. We'll come across it. It's not the abbreviation for time unit. So just an S. Save yourself lots of ink and leave those E-Cs at home. Okay, just go with the S's. That's good. Okay. So awesome, we're going to measure time. Right, what else do you want to measure? Speed. Okay, speed. Or another word for speed that we use in a velocity, that we use in a technical term. Velocity. Speed or velocity. Well done. And what's the unit going to be for speed? Kilometres per hour is a unit we use. Metres per second. Okay, so it's a distance and a time, which is kilometres per hour is a distance and a time. But if we're going to be using the SI units, basic system, then we want time in seconds, and we want distance in metres. So we're going to talk about metres per second. Metre per second. Okay. And you can write that either way meters per second or meters second to the minus one, which is the same as a per. You're going to come across this in maths in a wee while. You haven't done it yet. Um, but a negative power is the same as a divide. <coughs> so that's ex either of those things mean exactly the same thing. Have you done or are you starting to look at powers already in maths? Yeah. Good grief. The martyr must talk faster than I do. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> she is pretty quick. She does, she does a good job. Okay. So that's, and um, to do with kilometres per hour, does anyone know how to change kilometres per hour into metres per second? <coughs> okay. Let's, <coughs> let's have a look at um, one kilometre per hour. Okay. So that would be a thousand metres over how many seconds are other than an hour? 60 seconds in an hour. One, two, three. I'm just going to count for 60. That'll be an hour gone, and then we can all go home. Okay, here we go. One, two, 60 times. Oh, damn, 60 times over. Right, 60 times 60, which is 3,600. Yeah? So, and then you can do a whole lot of cancelling out. That and move the point there. So, one divided by 3.6 metres per second. Okay? So, if you want to change kilometres per hour into metres per second, you divide by 3.6. Or if you're going the other way, if you're changing metres per second into kilometres per hour, you times by 3.6. Yeah. So car doing 100 kilometres per hour, it's about 27, 28 metres per second. Roughly. Yeah, I should have done that. Exactly, I should have done that. Yep, that's exactly what I should have done. Thank you. Brilliant. So we're going to measure. We can now measure how fast something's going. Super. What else do we want to measure? Temperature. Ooh, now you've opened a can of worms. This is the fun one. Temperature. Right. Thanks, Erwin. Temperature is good. <coughs> so units for temperature. Degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. Any advances on degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius? Yeah, 
Kelvin scale. Okay, so we've got three different scales. And we're going to have some question about which one are we going to use and why and how do they relate to each other? What do they look like? So, so is Celsius is measuring? It's not your side units. It's not the standard one, no. Okay, so if we look at temperature, I'll just go to a different colour because you know, I'm getting a bit bored with black. I'm get a bit. Okay, so we're going to have this is this is thing. So at one end of the thing we're going to have, um, we'll call it cold, and at the other end we'll have something called hot, just so that we've got a couple of. You know, this is cold and this is hot. And we probably want a couple of, of points that we can talk about to make a scale. So we'll go for um, cold can be uh, where water turns to ice. So fr freezing water. And hot can be where it boils. Those are good numbers. Those are things that we're all familiar with. Yep, so we, we know what we're talking about. If we've all... Uh, stood on our bare feet on the, on the ice, and you know what, yeah, it's cold. You agree with that? You've gone outside your flat in Dunedin. In fact, you could probably stay inside your flat in Dunedin. <coughs> and it's, it's, it's down here. It's, uh, and we agree it's cold. Yeah, no, not a problem. Yeah. Okay. And you've also, yeah, you've all tried to make a cup of tea and tried to drink it before it's cooled down. <laughs> that was really hot. Yeah. So you've, you've done that as well. So we, we know about these, uh, our bodies have experienced these things and we, we know what they're like. Okay. So let's um, have a look at scale. So, First one, Fahrenheit. Um, this on the Fahrenheit scale is 212. And this one, exactly, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yep. So uh, in some parts of the world, you'll still see the gen general reporting done in those units. So if you go to the States and you turn on the TV and you watch the weather, they'll be telling you things like it's 70 or 80 degrees. Yep. And you'll go, is that hot or cold? I don't know. If you've lived there for a while, you'll know exactly where the 70 or 80 degrees is hot or cold. And then you go, no, okay, right. Yeah, it's quite warm. Um, so they have this, this scale. And same sort of thing as the yard and the miles and those sort of things. It's, it's not a nice decimal scale. So the reason that we like meters and those sort of things is you go meters and then a thousand is a kilometer and a thousand of those. And everything goes in nice lots of tens. Whereas I don't know, if you want to go inches to feet, it's 12. Feet to yards is 3. Yards to miles is the next one is, you want to know the actual number, 1,536 or some exciting number like that. <coughs> yeah, and then it's, it's just all weird numbers all in it, and it's real hard to yeah, do the calculations. So <coughs> that's part of the rationale behind metric system, uh, making things decimal. So. We have uh, the Celsius scale, named after um, Gabriel Celsius, and that basically calls this one zero degrees and this one 100. Okay. And it's not a fluke that that's zero and 100. When they decided to make the scale, they said, what's cold? I will think of something that's typically cold. I know, um, the flattened and eaten. And we, we, no, they thought of the point where the point where water changes from ice into water. And said, let's just call that zero. So they chose that as zero. And the point where water changes from liquid to steam, we'll call that 100. <coughs> so those points were actually chosen to be 100 apart. And then they said, let's just break it up into 100 bits in between and call each one of those a degree. Yep. So we end up with these, these scales. Okay. And obviously you can go this way. Now you can get things that are you know, really hot, like molten metal. Okay, so engineering, you're going to end up um, doing some casting somewhere along the line. You want especially going to be mechanical students. You want to think about properties of materials. Um, you're going to end up thinking about you know, when you melt your copper. Okay, and it's a bit hotter than this. Okay, it's, it's really hot. And even down here, you can get things like you know, technical terms, really, really hot. Um, like, like maybe the sun, which is uh, really, really hot. Okay. So you can go this way with bigger and bigger numbers. Yep. And then you can go this way. So you can go outside Dunedin and you can go to Central Otago and you get other technical terms. Yeah. You get things down this end of the scale, which, which are other you know, correct technical terms for them. Yep. Way down here, they're really cold. Yep. Okay. And the question, the interesting one for this one is if we start going this way, 
Okay, so let's start. I need a two for this. Let's, let's start up here. So we're thinking just about water. Okay. So if you're talking about water here, so you've boiled your jug, you've left it boiling, you've gone away, you've left it boiling, and the water starts escaping from the jug, doesn't it? And you come back into the room and it's all floating around in the air. These are water, by the way. And they're all floating around in the air doing this business. Yep. Zooming all over the place. Yeah. <coughs> Heat, or temperature, is, is a measure of how, how much energy things have got. So when they're in the air, they're zooming around all over the show. Lots and lots of energy. <laughs> Real good. Uh, and then you start to cool them down a bit, and they sort of slow down a bit, and they get to the point where they turn into, into water. So they're not zooming around free in the room anymore. They're sort of tied together. They can still move around each other real easy. So they're still moving quite a lot. I mean, you know, you've got water in a cup, you can pour it. And they go, <laughs> yeah, nice and easy. They, they can move around each other real easy. Yeah. But they haven't got as much energy as when they're doing, doing the big dance. Okay, so they come in closer together, flowing around each other, tied up in place. Then you come down here and you get to the point where they can't move around each other anymore. They get locked into a certain position. They're still vibrating, but they're locked into a set position. Okay. So when you tip it, it stays in a lump, ice. Yeah, so they, but they're still vibrating. They've still got energy in the, in the particles. But they're locked in one place. Yep. And then you keep on cooling it down. And what happens is you cool them down even more, they start vibrating a bit less and less. Now there must be a point where it can stop. Theoretically, there's a point where it stops. And you can't go, you can't go backwards because it'll be moving again. So then the point where it's actually stopped has got to be as you can't take any more energy out of that. Yeah. So somewhere down here. There's a point where you can't get past, where it's actually stopped. And we call that absolute zero. Okay? And if, when we're doing engineering, we want this to be our starting point when we're, cal we're calculating. Okay? You don't want zero to be the point where there's something going. Okay? Imagine if I said, we're going to measure speed, and we're going to call this fast zero. Okay? That's zero. Everybody got it? We're all happy. OK, this is zero. Negative zero, now I'm going the other way. Okay, so that's zero, and you have to measure all your speeds compared to that. Okay, so you guys are kind of, so I'm going this way at zero. You're all moving that way at negative two. You got that? What a dumb system that would be. It's much better to have zero. Yeah, and then we're all zero. Yeah, it makes much more sense. Yeah, okay, so having this as zero is kind of like trying to do that with, with speed. It's, it's why something in the middle is zero. Zero should be at the start. So if we go here and call it zero, we're on the Kelvin scale. Okay. So this is zero Kelvin. This is 273 Kelvin. This is 373 Kelvin. Okay, so a difference again of a 100 from here to here. So one. Kelvin, shifting something one Kelvin is the same as shifting at one degree Celsius. They just start at different places. So the sizes of the units are exactly the same. They just have different starting points. Yeah. So this one is negative 273 degrees Celsius, which is a little bit colder even than central Otago. Yeah. It's quite chilly. And in terms of what happens down there and how you actually get there, really interesting physics. It's some really, really interesting stuff. If you think about it, just hang out of time. I have a bit of time. Um, <coughs> we've got, um, when you try and get things cold, how, how do you make something cold? How, how do you cool down your, you know, your macaroni once you've finished eating and you want to save it for the next day? How do you, how do you make it go cold? Stick it in the fridge. So you stick it next to something that's colder than it, and it'll it'll give up its heat to the cold thing. It's one of the laws of thermodynamics. Okay. So you want your macaroni to go cold, so you put it in the fridge. You want it to go colder than that, you stick it in the freezer, because the freezer is colder than the fridge, so you put it in a colder environment. If you want to make it go colder than the freezer, you leave it out in your lounge overnight in Dunedin. Yeah, okay, we all know, we all know that. It works fine. But you have to find something that's colder than your freezer. To make it go colder than, than that. So what you know, what do you want to do when you want to get things that are colder 
than anything you could put them next to. How can you get them colder than the coldest thing you've got? You've still got the problem with a, with a, a fridge which is a heat exchange. So it takes the heat from somewhere else and dumps it off. So you've still got that problem of dumping it off somewhere. Yeah. Um, you could go to outer space. You can go, it's pretty cold in the outer space. So outer space on this scale is, is about here somewhere at 3K. Um, it's called background radiation. So after the Big Bang, there was a lot of energy, and there's still energy in outer space, and it's about 3K, a negative 270 degrees Celsius, roughly, background radiation. Um, so there's still 3K worth of energy, even in, in outer space. <coughs> if you want to get colder than that, you've got to do some real good picking stuff. Um, so it's been done in a few places around the world. One of them is about 500 metres that way in the physics department at the University of Otago. Um, they did it when I was a student back there in the mid-80s. Um, and basically the way, it was super stuff, it was awesome. Um, so what you do is you get a force field, they do it all by, by force fields, um, awesome stuff. So a magnetic field. So the thing that you're trying to cool down is, is charged. So ions, um, atoms that I had before with the electrons missing. So you get a charged thing and you can hold it in a, in a magnetic field. So you make a magnetic field and you pop your stuff in the magnetic field and it, and it sits there. And then, so the particles are all in there jiggling around, and then you lower the edges of the magnetic field a bit, so the energetic ones sort of can jump out, and the ones with not much energy can get left in there. So they've still got some energy, but you sort of keep the lazy ones. Yeah? So let, let, let the ones that want to get up in the morning get out, and the lazy ones can stay in there. Yeah? So make it easy for them to escape, and only the slack ones stay in there. And then what you do is you, you line up your, your magnetic field so the particles are travelling in, in one direction. And then you get a laser, like, you know, like the old police speed radar thing. So you get a laser, and you wait for the particles to be coming towards you, and you shoot them with the laser. And that slows them down. So you take your energy away from them, basically, by a, a, a form of collision. And you slow them down, so you just lose it one at a time, one particle at a time. You slow them down. Each time a particle is coming towards you, 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 you zap it. It's a laser goes at the speed of light. So three, three, oh yeah, no, yeah, a lot, yeah. It was a, it was a really good experimental setup to get it all to work. It was, yeah. And then eventually you get it to the point where you just can take a lot of the energy out of it and you can get it right down inside, inside here. And it does weird things. So you've got gas, liquid, solid, it's called a Bose-Einstein condensate. So when the particles sort of start to collapse on themselves, then you end up with this new type of matter. Um, I remember sitting in, the, in, a la in a lecture one day, and I was sitting in the lecture, as you do, as you're doing right now. <sighs> when's lunch? You know, when's it, when's it going to end? And someone knocked at the door and sort of looked at the lecture, and they said, I'm out of here, and just ran away. And that was the first time they'd made the Bose-Einstein condensate downstairs. Oh, let me go and see this. Off downstairs to have a, have a look at it. Um, <coughs> cool. OK, so temperature, a big story about temperature. Um, but we're going with Kelvin as the, as the base unit. Um, so that the proper SI unit is a Kelvin, capital K for Kelvin. And um, yeah, so you use degrees Celsius in quite a lot of calculations because it's, a, it's an everyday useful thing. But particularly when you do a paper called thermodynamics and we're interested in the starting point, you'll need to do some calculations in Kelvin. So if you're just asking the question, how much has the temperature changed, it doesn't matter whether you're using Celsius or Kelvin, because a, a change of 10 degrees is going to be that much on either scale. But if you want to know how much actual energy you've got, you don't want to be starting in the middle. You want to start at the start, and then you need Kelvin. So if you're particularly a mechanical student, if you're going to go and do mechanical engineering and thermodynamics, you'll need to have a good grasp on, on zero Kelvin. Cool. We're going well. It's not degrees Kelvin, it's just Kelvin. Just Kelvin. The degrees is Celsius and Fahrenheit, Kelvin is just Kelvin. Yeah, good point. I have no idea. Um, we can probably work it out. How do you go from Fahrenheit to Celsius? You subtract 32, multiply by 5, and divide by 9. So five, 5 nights and a 32 in there somewhere. So we want to go the other way, don't we? We want to go from Celsius back to Fahrenheit. So you've got to 
let's try one of these. Let's try one of these numbers and see if it works out properly. So if you divide by five, multiply by nine, and add thirty-two. Okay, who's got a calculator? Calculator. Someone get a calculator out. There we go. Dylan's onto it. So negative two hundred and seventy-three. There you go. It's not a calculator, then, is it? No. It's a prize out of a wheat mix packet. It's not a calculator. <laughs> <laughs> Who's? Someone must have a calculator. <coughs> there we go. Finn has got a legit-looking calculator, and so is Natasha. Okay, so both of you. So we got the right answer. So negative two hundred and seventy-three. Emory's got a calculator on the screen as well. Okay, so negative 273 divided by 5 times 9 plus 32. Okay, Emory says the answer should be negative 459.4. Is that your James? Yep, so negative 460. There you go, Aaron, that answers your question. So we can put that on. Negative 460. James's cell phone for the win. Yep, it's got an app on the cell phone that can act as a calculator. Cool. Yep, good question, Aaron. And like I said, I didn't know the answer, but I knew how to figure it out. And that's often the case in physics. I haven't got a clue what the answer is. How can we figure it out? Yep, good stuff. Brilliant. Okay, so temperature is, is quite an exciting one. I quite like temperature. I did my, my honours physics stuff. I did honours physics as a, um, in thermodynamics around that area. So. For that. Well, no, I mean, theoretically not, and the particles can just always get more and more energy and move faster and faster, um, but they do really weird things at the other end as well. Um, there's quite a nice YouTube video you can look called How Hot is Hot, or As Hot as You Can Get, or something like that. It basically answers that question. It's, just, yeah, it's, quite, it's quite cool. Um, Rightio, we're doing well here. We've got a long way through this. Um, what else? There's still quite a lot more things we can measure and that you will have to measure. So for all these ones, yep, you'll definitely be using all these ones in this course. Um, and there's a few more that you need and then there's a lot that you won't need in this course but you at least want to have a think about. So let's get rid of temperature. It was pretty exciting but we'll lose it in the meantime. And 